Well, hello, everyone. Fancy seeing you all here today for another episode of the Chilling with the Villain podcast, classic wrestling review podcast. But uh, we actually do a bit of everything here on the podcast, all things pro wrestling, because as many of you may know, I am the villain Marty Skell, professional wrestler of nearly 20 years or maybe even longer, actually, if I think about it. I try not to think about it too hard because it's kind of crazy to think that I've spent more of my life being a wrestler than not being a wrestler, which is kind of crazy to think about. So of course, being a wrestler, I would have a podcast about wrestling. And yes, as many of you may know, normally we we, we review old uh, classic wrestling pay-per-views or PLEs as they're called now. In fact, there's one going on right now, the uh, the Saudi Arabia King and Queen of the Ring, but I'm missing it just to uh, come speak to all of you. But today's episode, a little bit different. Sam brought it to my attention that this week or last week, Netflix had added the movie Peanuts Butter Falcon, which I guess you could say is somewhat of a wrestling themed movie. Uh, I guess that'll be part of the discussion today on the, on the podcast. Uh, but it did have two big wrestling stars in Mick Foley and Jake the Snake. So we're going to count it as a wrestling movie. And we figured because it's been it's been added to Netflix. That was actually trending in the top 10. Is that right, Sam? Yes, it was. Yep. It At was. the time when we had the idea to do it, by the time you guys go. are listening to this, I'm pretty sure it'll already be out of there. But Maybe it'll climb back up again. Maybe, Maybe. it will. Because of what? Because of us? Yeah. I <laughs> yeah, think so. I hope so. Well, it just seems like there's been like a, a renewed love for this movie because this originally came out in 2019. 19, right? I think. Yeah. 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 So and I've... it did pretty well at the time. You know, it's it like did. a yeah, little indie darling movie and yeah i think it's getting like a new lease of life on streaming so might as well cover it now right well that's the that's how streaming is these days um i Mm. did see the movie back probably when it came out when it i'm sure it's been on some other streaming services for because for me to have seen it i don't remember going to the movie theater so i've seen it somehow i remember uh relatively enjoying it before but now I just watched it again the other day with you, Sam. And then today we're going to review it. So, uh, yes, indeed. I haven't introduced you yet, Sam. To everyone listening, this is Sam. Um, shall, we just get, <laughs> shall we get into it? Yeah, we might as well. That's a very quaint intro you did at the start, <laughs> by the way, when you went, fancy seeing you here at Chilling with the Villain. Who wrote your intro? Winnie the uh, Pooh? <laughs> well, I do have a thing of um, being a British wrestler in America. I don't tend to do it on this podcast, but if I do interviews or promos, I tend to speak a little bit more like Winnie the Pooh or Peppa Pig. Do you so, know what I mean? Or Peppa Pig, yeah. Just to make it more simple for people to understand. Yeah. I'm looking like <laughs> Daddy Pig today. That's not a good thing, is it? I don't... I, uh, I guess I know what Daddy Pig looks like, yeah. I always get confused between Peppa Pig and... Or am I getting confused right now? Peppa Pig is the cartoon, right? Yes. What's the um, the candies at Marks and Spencer? What are they called? Are they also called Peppa Pigs? Oh, maybe they are. Are they? Hmm. Why would they, is it is it like a cut a candy version of the cartoon? Don't know. Maybe they branched out and made a. They're called Percy Pigs. Universe. Oh, Percy Pigs. Okay, there. Percy Pigs. A lot of pigs in Britain, it seems. Yeah. Well. Well. <laughs> well, <laughs> well. We'll leave that there. Yeah. Well, careful. <laughs> careful. <laughs> All right, let's just get straight to it then. So, yes, the peanut butter falcon. Okay, I'm going to give you a little, the first like part of the synopsis, and then you're going to be like, Sam, why are you, cu- this is a wrestling podcast? Why mm. are we doing this? Mm. So it starts with this guy, Zach, like young man. I think they said he's 22 in the movie. Oh, wow. And despite having Down syndrome, he has been kind of, failed by the state and he's being looked after in an old person's care facility. Right. And he's just like done with it and he wants to escape. So yeah. Why are we covering this on a wrestling podcast? Well, why does he want to escape apart from it's probably boring in there. He to pass the time just hammers this old VHS tape. And I think we've all been there where you just have like one tape and you run it into the ground. I don't know what yours was. Well, you say we've all been there. A lot of our, Newer listeners or younger listeners, should I say, probably haven't been there. True, but they may have a DVD or a streaming 
thing that they just keep hitting over and over again that they're obsessed with. Mine was the VHS for the South Park movie. <laughs> you must have had stuff before that, though. Oh, maybe Predator. I used to hammer we, that. We a lot. obviously had different childhoods. I think mine was the um, the Little Rascals uh, movie. I used to watch that all the time. I used to watch the uh, Muppets Christmas Carol all year <laughs> all year round. All year round. Um, Jeez, uh, honey, you know what I used to watch? So the more famous movie was Honey, I Blew Up the Kid. Shrunk, no, Shrunk the Kids was the f- more famous Okay, one. there we go. I've got it wrong already. So the more famous one was Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. I used to always watch Honey, I Blew Up the Kid. I should go back and watch that, actually, because I probably haven't seen that since I was a kid, but I used yeah, to watch that religiously as a kid. Don't worry, guys. We won't cover Honey, I Blew Up the Kid on the podcast. <laughs> unless I you promise you to. this, unless you want us to. I mean, we did Roadhouse. There's no wrestling in that. That was a bonus episode, though. I will put that up. It's, are we just transitioning freebie. into a movie review? Movie review I think we podcast. are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think we are. But I promise you, this movie is tangentially related to wrestling. So this VHS tape that Zach just hammers is a an advertisement for a wrestling school for his hero his this wrestler his his this guy's hero the salt water redneck and he watches it all the time and when we watched him watching it did you notice when they use kind of archive footage of wrestling to tie into the movie like where that was from or who that was i couldn't do it but then again my i don't have the encyclopedic brain of wrestling that that you do but they must have just like taken archive footage right well original like the first clip was of windham and flair um so obviously probably talking nwa or whatnot but then the second clip it had no ring aprons and i thought maybe it may have been world class but i'm really not sure i should probably google it it was like i even paused the tape to or it wasn't a tape but paused netflix <laughs> to uh look closely and i just couldn't work it out at all so if anyone's listening and they've seen this movie and they know where the wrestling is from please tell us because i couldn't work it out yeah so Zach makes a daring escape because he wants to go fulfill his life's dream of becoming a professional wrestler, which you can relate to. Totally. He makes a very unrealistic escape from the care home in which <laughs> they open up the bars and he greases up and slips out. And it just reminded me of that returning, like that recurring skit from Family Guy where the deaf guy is greased up and they have to catch him. <laughs> It's just what I was thinking of when I saw it. I was like, oh my God, they just stole their plot from Family Guy. <laughs> Anyways. He goes on the run and he hides in this boat, uh, which was docked because obviously the care home supervisors are going to be looking for him. Right. Meanwhile, this guy called Tyler, who's played by Shia LaBeouf, is gets he's a fisherman, and this is set in North Carolina. He gets fired from his job because he starts kind of he's kind of lost his way, and he's bringing in a league. I think he's kind of stealing from poaching from other people's like lobster or crab pots and That's then fine. and then you know selling it to the fishery or whatever so it's like and it's illegal he doesn't have a license so he gets fired on the way out he sets fire to his rivals like um gear you know all their stuff that the they cages. use fishing. the cages and all of that yeah and then he runs away and then obviously he gets in this boat and then speeds away and who's in the boat it's the boat that Zach's hiding in. So they meet and they in initially, obviously, like Tyler has his goal, like his journey. He turns out in the end, he just wants to get to Jupiter, Florida and start his own fishing charters. And he's he's just wants to get out there, get to Florida, and doesn't care who's in his way, as you can tell by his attitude of like burning people's stuff down and being a bit of a bad egg. And obviously, Zach is now in his way, kind of, you know. So, like, what do you do? Well, it turns out Zach is kind of you know open with who he is and what he wants to be. And he tells Tyler that he wants to go to this place, this place further down in North Carolina where the wrestling school is. So Tyler's kind of like, okay, well, listen, like you can tag along with me until then, then I'm going to drop you off and then carry on on my journey. So fine. Good stuff. Meanwhile, this care worker called Eleanor, who's played by Dakota Johnson, who is in, but incidentally, the Suspiria remake. Have you seen that? That Amazon put out. It's one of my favorite movies of all time, but it does, just, oh, no. does not get credit. Yeah, because it's a remake, so everyone just assumes it's. She junk. was in. Super was she good, in dude. The Social Network. Did I make that up? 
Yeah, she was in the social network. I think that was like one of the first things she did. She's done other stuff as well. But because Ooh. she's been in Madam Web and she's been in the Fifty Shades movies, people think she can't act, but she actually can, as we see here and in oh. Suspiria, which I advise you to check out. And she is hunting for Zach, right? Because he's wayward. He's, he's ran away. So Tyler is being hunted by the people whose stuff he's set fire to. And Zach is also being hunted by the care home team, right? So they both kind of have that kind of kindred. They're like, oh, Tyler kind of warms up to Zach when he realizes they're both kind of like on the lamb. You know, they're, they're both guys on the run and finds that kind of like romantic, not in a kissy sense, but in a broader sense, it's just like a cool thing. So they kind of warm up to each other and he kind of takes Zach under his wing, teaches him some life skills and things, shoots a shotgun, blah, 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 all of that good stuff. They drink moonshine and have a wonderful time. They do a lot of like Huckleberry Finn style adventures. And I think that's kind of part of the charm of the movie that everybody likes it for is it's kind of like whimsical nature of these two guys just exploring through America, right? I think that's kind of like the main thing that people enjoy or take away from this movie. And all that stuff is very, very good. And we'll get to like the pros and cons of the movie in a bit. Eleanor eventually meets up with them and she finds out that her boss wants to put Zach in this kind of like really awful, like halfway house for crackheads and prostitutes and stuff. And it just won't be a good environment for him. So when she finds that out, she actually kind of almost joins them on the run, like, or at least to get him to his wrestling school so he can have a good, so he can experience something that he wants to experience before he has this, you know, horrible, horrible time, horrible future. They reach the Aiden, North Carolina which is where the wrestling school, the Saltwater Rednecks wrestling school is supposed to be. And they get there and it's just a little trailer home thing. And they're like, oh, this can't be the place. Maybe we've got it wrong, but they get it right. They knock on the door and the Saltwater the Redneck obviously opens the door, but he's just as he is, Clint. He's retired. He's not the Saltwater Redneck anymore. Turns out that tape is like 20 years old, you know, 30 years old. And he doesn't have the wrestling school anymore. So Tyler tells the Saltwater Redneck or Clint that, oh, well, Zach's traveled a long way. And we've had these Mark Twain style Huckleberry Finn adventures to get here in which they build a, uh, they build a makeshift raft and flow down the river because they can't travel by the roads because the people are out looking for them apparently on the roads. And I guess the police as well which they then ignore because at the end of the movie, they just drive down the road. But anyways, <laughs> um, they build a little makeshift raft. They experience religion. They do this, they do that. All these fun little adventures culminates here, but bad news, you know, there's no wrestling school. Clint obviously feels bad about this. So after they all walk away, he catches up to them in his car, in his persona with his face paint and his legend and life character. He play, he's, he's back. He's a saltwater redneck. And what he does is he, there's like a local and local is kind of like the, the nicest way we can put this. Are we going to get to this? Um, I guess you would say more like a backyard wrestling. Backyard thing. wrestling. Yeah. Like it's, we'll, we'll say a local wrestling event, but yeah, it's, it's, it's a backyard wrestling event in like the nearby town or maybe his town. And he tries to grease the wheels and get Zach on the card. At this at this wrestling show and the referee so i don't know why he's greasing the wheels to the referee and not the promoter but unless it's one and the same person is played by mick foley who you may have seen from wrestling <laughs> and also his opponent sam or samson is played by jake the snake roberts who you may have seen from Beyond the Mat, which we covered. <laughs> now, basically the exact same character as well. Like exactly how he was in Beyond the Mat, he basically was playing that character in this. But obviously, this is mu this is mu like 2019 or 2018 they filmed it. So he's cleaned up, he's better now, but he's playing kind of like his past self, if you will. Is that fair to say? Washed up wrestler, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it turns out, so weird but like zach's on the card now ellen is upset because the match before zach's match was a hardcore match and everyone was busted open and being hit with chairs and stuff so she was worried about zach and tyler's trying to console her be like no that's a particular type of match we don't you know that's not what he's going to be doing so she's like okay cool then 
and also he uh she can't prevent him because tyler like handcuffs her to a steering wheel so she can't get out but anyways samson starts like kind of being a little bit rough like he's vader right to zach and obviously that upsets people but zach kind of gets fired up right and he he handles it so that's all nice and good up until this point Mm, actually, I guess it kind of lost us a little bit by the whole kind of just like greasing the wheels and like, I know you want to get into how they portray wrestling. Um, I, I will leave you to do that bit because you've got good you've got good thoughts on that. But up until that point, I would say that this movie is relatively grounded. Would yes. you say like real, you know, even though they have a it's kind very of larger than life but... adventure, it's still like within the realm of possibility and it's, the laws of physics and you know that sort of stuff it's pretty far-fetched and there's quite a lot of loopholes but at the same time yes it's very like mundane and mm -hmm. not a whole lot of smoke and mirrors uh yeah. mainly the, trying to tell the main story of that sort of dynamic and relationship between zach and um tyler 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 yeah for sure and getting those nice moments from their relationship this whole entire movie until this sort of last scene yes i'd agree with that and then, oh, so it turns out he's the saltwater rednecks like finishing move or trademark move is the atomic throw, where he he kind of gets them over his head in like a military press. I think slam it's essentially style. a gorilla press, gorilla press, yeah, slam or something is. like that. Yeah, and then he, I think he spins them around like you would like a um, like a whatever like airplane spin, and then he throws them out of the ring from inside the ring, and Zach's like, I want to do that, and then the saltwater redneck says. Oh, it's just smoke and mirrors, right? We we cut uh, have, we have a close up to me, and then we cut to like I guess why or something like so straight away like that's kind of not what happens in wrestling. But I'll get let you get to that. But then Zach does it for real in like the I don't know if it's deliberately terrible looking or if it's you know if it's supposed to be kind of exaggerated because that's how Zach sees what he's doing but he throws Jake the Snake Roberts or Samson out of the ring who just like flies laterally in slow motion and it's just like the worst looking thing in the world and I saw this with my partner at the time and I was I watched it before then I watched it with my partner at the time and I was looking I was like oh my god there's going to be that bit where he throws Zach throws Jake the Snake Roberts out of the out of the ring and I'm going to die of cringe. Like it's that bad. And it happens. And honestly, like, I can't believe pe more people don't talk about this, but like, it just kind of ruins the movie for me. Now I did let's find save opinion on Wikipedia. For, let's, let's, let's save opinions. We're still doing for the transcript. Okay. All right, then we'll get to the transcript. So while Jake, the snake Roberts is being thrown in slow motion through the air, it, like Looney Tunes physics, the guys who's, um, shrimp pots or whatever have been burnt <laughs> by Tyler catch up to him and beat him on the head with a tire iron. And that's, um, I can't remember their names. Duncan played that by boy. John. J yes. Duncan played by John Hawks, very skinny John Hawks, who was the guy who can't get laid in the perfect storm. That's all I recognize him from. And rat boy played by yellow wolf. And they attack him with a tire iron across his head and break his head. Then we cut to shots of like Eleanor and Zach looking crestfallen in the hospital and all sad. And then it cuts to them, just those two in the in a car driving down the highway. So, and there's a shot where it's just Zach, like front on on the car, just Zach and Eleanor. So it's like, oh no. So what they're trying to do is imply that Tyler got killed by the one hit to the head, right? Which I guess could happen. But then he just like pops up from the back with a kind of cartoon bandage on his head. And it's like, oh, and it turns out they're all going to Jupiter, Florida. And it's implied that they, as the movie closes, they're going to start like a new life, the three of them as a family. Because, oh yeah. And also, after. Yeah. And also Eleanor and Tyler kind of like hook up or fall in love. Yeah. Mm. So that is the peanut butter falcon. I wanted to take a minute to talk about our newest sponsor, madcatbeardcare.com. Myself, I have a beard. Sam, you have a beard. Beards are very popular now, but you've got to take care of your beard. you got to get yourself over to madcatbeardcare.com. I'm looking at the oils and the balms on there. First of all, they're all designed by different pro wrestlers and marketed 
as different pro wrestlers. So there's a bunch of guys involved with this, like Matt Cardona, Brian Myers, Delirious, Jay Lethal, a whole collection of awesome wrestlers that have their own product on madcatbeardcare.com. Not only that, but a portion of the profits go to cat rescues around the country. So I think that's already exciting. But the beard oils and the balms both are made from organic argan oil, jojoba and vitamin E, which when combined helps to soften, strengthen and vitalize and stimulate circulation in the face, nourishing and strengthening the hair follicles to assist growth. Now, this is what you need. If you've got a patchy beard, you need to get yourself to Mad Cat Beard Care. Dot com. The balms also include the same oil and mixture as the oils, but he adds the sheer butter, which helps alleviate itch and irritation to your face, while also helping control pesky stray hairs by allowing you to style them into place. He uses local organic beeswax that helps to get more of a hold to your style. So you got to look after your skin underneath your beard, just like you do your scalp. Like these aren't things that you can neglect. And that's why we've teamed up with madcatbeercare.com. And right now, just for listening to the show, you can get yourself a whopping 15% off products at madcatbeercare.com by using the code villain. That's 15% for the promo code villain. That's V I L L A I. And pick yourself up the villain's curse, my own beard oil, my own beard balm. That's exactly what I use every day on my face to make my famous beard look beautiful. You can do the same thing too. So last time I'm going to say it, get yourself over now to madcatbeardcare.com. Promo villain. I think the one thing which they don't hammer home too much, but I guess is a key element of the movie and maybe a reason why Tyler is the way he is. And also the reason why Tyler warms up to Zach is I guess we're led to believe that Tyler killed his brother in a, by falling asleep or drink driving at the wheel. At the wheel. Yep. Yeah. He's obviously got PTSD from that. And that's really kind of, it's been bothering him and everything else. It kind of seems like that his life has gone off the rails since then was the impression that we kind of get from the movie. Right. Yeah. And I think that's also the reason why he kind of takes Zach underneath his wing. To, yeah, like his like older his brother, brother took under him under his wing. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, there's a lot lot to go over there. Um, I guess if we wanted to start with the pros, um, like I said, I feel like the, the majority of the movie, 75% of the movie, if not more, is pretty, pretty good. I think if you don't take it too seriously with the kind of story and the plot, I think you can really enjoy it because first of all, I do think the, I mean, first of all, I think the main thing is Zach, whose real name in real life is Zach. Um, apparently they made the movie like around him completely. Like the director met Zach in real life. Zach yeah. had said that he wanted to be a actor in Hollywood. And he basically wrote this script for him having never acted or anything before. Right. Yeah. And, and they thought, didn't really direct before either. I think this was their first movie. Wow. Well, Zach, I thought, did terrific i thought he was amazing yes. very very good very very good i thought um shia labeouf which we were debating how you say his name before mm. i thought he did a really good job and i thought dakota johnson was just awesome as well like the fact that you said people think she can't act that's a shame because i thought I felt like she did a really good job here um yeah. very very like natural actor you know and yeah. same with shia labeouf like it doesn't feel like they're acting it feels yes. kind of like you're watching like a documentary almost like very natural and i yeah. felt like the chemistry between the more like between uh tyler and her what's her name in the movie eleanor eleanor was really good obviously the chemistry between zach and tyler was really really was good really good yeah. um like like i said the, the cinema cinematography and the the color palette and stuff of the movie i just thought was really really was good. well done right yeah. yeah. And the soundtracks was really good. It all kind of added to that aesthetic of what the movie is. And that kind of yeah. like, it, does, it the movie kind of makes you want to go on like a road trip, doesn't it? And, um, or go into like the woods and the lakes of America and everything else. And they make it seem, because if you think about it, realistically, what they're doing, we would all probably, well, you might enjoy it. But most of us would think this is horrible. Like they've got no money. They're sleeping outside. They're trying to travel by foot or by making a raft and just like 
all this stuff, it just sounds horrendous. I would not enjoy this whatsoever. But somehow, some way, they the movie it kind of makes you feel like, oh, they're having a great time and this is so much fun and they're just yeah. living the best life. Do you know what I mean? Like I said, it totally romanticizes it. Yes, and yes. I also think aesthetic is a good word because yeah. this movie is all about the aesthetic. Yeah, I'm going to go is. ahead and say that. Yeah, it's There's all some about substance the substance as well, yeah. but that, I, I guess. Would, yeah, to a degree. Yeah. Um, so those are things, and we even said we watched the movie together and at one point, I think it was when uh, Tyler and Zach were around the bonfire I remember saying to you, I was like, oh shit, that's a really good shot. They had such a good shot. I think the the light from the fire was just reflecting on Zach's face. It was just really strong imagery, I thought. There was a lot of good shots in this movie. And like uh, whoever the cinematographer is, Nigel Bluck, he's called. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um did a, like an incredible job. Yeah, some really good shots. And like I'd say, actually, generally speaking, even though they use the first-time directors. This is better directed than the Iron Claw, for example, up in, up until the end. You know, it was it was very well made. And it was very well. The budget for this yeah. movie wasn't a lot, huh, being in India. So. No, it was, a, it was a pittance. It was six million. Now, wow, and you think, crazy. oh, that's still a lot of money, right? But they've got no. Shia LaBeouf, <laughs> right? Dakota Johnson. And they, could, they, they probably took a hefty pay cut to, like, do this movie. Well, yeah, they must have done, right? Yeah, I mean, there's there's load of people like Jake Rhodes, Mick Foley, John Hawks. He's you know Bruce Dern was his um, Jeez, yeah. was Carl, right? Uh, John Bernthal, the Punisher guy, is Mark Tyler's brother. Thomas Hayden Church, another famous actor, is the Saltwater Redneck. So and Yellow Wolf as well. So like these are people who would command a paycheck, and they, they managed to then make the movie on top of that for six million. Yeah, crazy. I think clearly they thought they could get Oscars doing this type of movie. Did it get any Oscars? No, I don't think it did. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it got some awards, though. Well, I think I think critically, let me just look at acc- accolades. Okay, without being rude to film fans, I have not heard of any of these things. Oh, I've heard by South by Southwest, obviously. So it won an award there. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think you know the yeah. the concept of having Zach in it, who has Down syndrome, obviously was a very unique, I think, concept for the for the movie. I guess so. For them, maybe it was seen to advertising and, you know, obviously it seems like both of them have been in a lot of kind of more sort of uh, mainstream, high budgeted stuff. Um, but maybe they thought this would be a really good chance for them to show their depth as actors and yes. be more serious, et cetera, et cetera. So assuming they, like, they must have taken a, a massive pay cut if the budget was only $6 million because... And it's cheap to record a movie, you know, right. Jesus. So that's pretty, and, but it, and I guess it, it drew a bunch of money as well, I assume. Do you have those details? Yeah, so apparently, you? yeah. So apparently it made tw- nearly $24 million at the box office, which again, isn't much, but this is a tiny little indie film that mm. made, had a budget of 6 million. So maybe like 12 million without, with like advertising. That's and then obviously it's now found a new lease of life on streaming, which doesn't even count. We're just talking about the move, uh, the yeah. box office when it came out of the theaters. So it's obviously done well for itself, and that we're talking about commercially relative to the size of the budget. The critical response, like I think most people really enjoyed this movie. It's hard not to like. It's like a very exceptionally charming movie. Charming's and, a good word. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's I mean, we, like, we like whimsy, don't we? Like mm-hmm. everyone, I mean, not specifically you or me. Although by your intro of this podcast, maybe you do like whimsy more than most people. But yeah, it's so yeah, it's got like a grade of A plus on Cinema Score. Oh wow, uh, seventy out of hundred on Metacritic. I uh, can't find IMDb, but most people just obviously really liked it. Now, I found one critical on Wikipedia at least review. David Fear of Rolling Stone felt that the climax veered close to magical realism, which I <laughs> think is a very nice way of putting it. Well, but he, that's like the only kind of um, time I've seen somebody kind of complain about the exact same parts that we're complaining about. Seems like a lot, most people just kind of were able to completely it. overlook it. Yeah. Which I guess is cool for the movie and cool for them. And it would, yeah, but uh, now. Well, before we get into that, because um, this is one of my, maybe one of my first problems with the movie, even though it's not a big deal or a deal breaker whatsoever. What do you think of the name peanut butter Falcon? 
for the movie or for the character? Because he picked that cat. Well, just name. both, but I guess for the movie, I guess. I think it's quirky enough. Oh, there's a little indie movie called The Peanut Butter Falcon, you know, mm. and it's got Shia LaBeouf and Dakota jo- I think it was quirky enough to work. I think it was a good decision. Because it's like, I, what does that mean? What is that? Yeah. I'm not so sure about it. I thought the... I, I don't know. I felt like the kid, Zach, coming up with his own wrestling character, I felt like it seemed just a bit... The Peanut Butter Falcon, it seemed a bit too try hard to be different i thought if that makes sense yeah but i think that's what gets butts in seats honestly people are pretty simple yeah i'm just not one of them so for me i was a bit like uh eh, kind of oh we're simple and- <laughs> we are simple dude i wrote my that eyes that. um <laughs> yeah. so that yeah um no i think i really I, I enjoyed the movie a lot and also like like i said the loopholes so i mean he escapes from that place okay that's one thing and then the idea of her not just, you know, once he's missing, not phoning the police. I know they cover it up because, you know, her manager tells her, no, don't call the police. Uh, you need to find him. So but like the idea of her, you know, looking around all these places. Like manually means, searching. Yes. Yeah, manually instead searching. of putting an all points bulletin with the law enforcement. Then, yeah, then exactly. she manages to find them by like a random late, like how the hell would she find them? And then when she does, Again, not calling the police or anything else. Because, you know, at worst, he's kidnapped him. But even at best, like, she then finds out they were shot at. Or was she in the scene when they get shot at? Even after no, that. She wasn't. Okay. But even after finding out about that, like, okay, we should, this is all a bit silly. We need to go sort this out. Do you know what I mean? Um, and she's doing it, I think, in the shuttle from her work as well. I just thought, uh, seemed all a little bit like, silly but you know it's it's a movie you obviously give it the benefit of the doubt and uh you suspend your disbelief just like wrestling i guess um but i feel like yeah as they got towards the end they kind of took advantage of that um i feel the wrestling part obviously couldn't really tell what they wanted it to be and i thought Mm -hmm, the idea mm -hmm. of the idea of him watching old wrestling tapes and then they finally get there it's a trailer and saltwater to redneck says oh, i closed the school 10 years ago i thought like oh that's that was really quite good and, and clever and yeah. quite a good spin. i guess the whole way through the movie you're kind of thinking like is this saltwater redneck thing really a, a deal you know um what is kind of strange we discussed this watching the movie so yeah that there, there's no there's the majority of the movie there's no mobile phones right right towards yeah. the end one comes out but we're going to assume this is before there were smartphones and there was like internet or anything like that she has a flip phone right which is yeah. i guess the justification for google maps not being in this universe at this point yeah where you just see that the business is out of business or yeah. could they not call i mean even on, i assume on the commercial for the saltwater redneck there's like a phone number. Oh, a number. may yeah, probably. Right. But they could have rang up and just been like, yeah. hey. Um, but they just go, they just take this kid's word for it. Do you know what I mean? Like, he's got the address somewhat, but nothing else. Um, so I thought that was kind of cool. But then when they knock on the salt water right next door, he's all taken aback. And it, it looks like he's like left wrestling and been done with wrestling for a long time. Right. And he's always like shocked, like, like yeah. calling in the saltwater redneck. It's like, it's almost acting like, Oh, I haven't heard that name in a long time. You know, like I've moved on from that, which again was understandable and cool. And even when he busts out the costume and stuff, you're like, Oh, okay, cool. But then you kind of find out, okay, he hasn't totally moved on because he's involved Friends in some backyard local well, federation. Yeah. And he's also hanging out with another washed up wrestler as well. Yeah. Which is Jake the snake. Uh, I will say this, the saltwater redneck, I thought he did look like quite a good washed up wrestler. And I feel like it would have been stronger if he, I mean, maybe this wouldn't have worked as well, but if he would have said, okay, but I can take you to like a local wrestling event or a local wrestling school or something. But then he kind of goes to this, what they tried to make out is like a local wrestling show, but it's not even that. It's like in the woods, there's a ring and yeah. And it's like, it's basically backyard wrestling, but backyard wrestling is always just like kids on messing around. Yeah. Right. And like, if they do have a ring that can happen, but again, it's still like kids and they're playing with like tables and chairs and stuff. Not like, like Jake, the snake 
he's playing this wrestler Sam, who's like a, a you know washed up ex wrestler. It's not like he was a famous wrestler and then he's like gone into like backyard, backyard wrestling. wrestling. It just doesn't really yeah. make sense. Do you know what I mean? And then <laughs> them just to be like, can we get him to wrestle? When he said like zero wrestling training or anything else, I think it would have been better. Like we, like we've done stuff like this on shows where I don't know, it's a kid's birthday or something or maybe mm-hmm. they do have a um a disability you know and you want to do something with them and me playing the bad guy I'd be like i go up to them push them and i'll say hey push me back kid they'll push me back yeah. and i'll take a bump boom and everyone, yeah and you know what i mean yeah. but here they were kind of like no we're gonna put zach who's you know who has this condition and zero wrestling training we're gonna have, have a wrestling match on this show against the washed up old wrestler and at first i thought it was going to be like the washed up world wrestler, like basically does what I just said, you know, like takes him through it. But then this happens in a lot of movies and TV shows. They can't decide if they want to like portray wrestling as a work or a shoot right. because all of a sudden it kind of like goes into a shoot. Or I don't know if it was like what you said, where they started working, but Sam, Jake the Snake, is trying to take advantage of him. It, it just that already just super lost me with. Mm-hmm. the wrestling part and Mick Foley there as the referee and he's, you know, being the ring announcer, but then, yeah, that the gorilla press over the top rope. Uh, I'm guessing maybe you should look into it. I'm guessing it's supposed to symbolize what Zach thought he was doing. And I think if that was, I mean, that was the only way it could make sense. If that was the case, they needed to demonstrate that better. I feel they needed to make that more obvious, you yeah. know, even if they had like a, white flash or something else um so i ended up finding the movie not the most satisfying with the finish and then just the idea like after you get smashed in the head that's enough for them to be like okay we're all moving to jupiter and we're gonna be one big family now and we can drive and forget about the people chasing you well i guess they hit him over the head so but the police or anything like that just forgotten about um i guess she's leaving her job uh i don't know um yeah it Honestly, it kind of reminded me of our last movie review, The Iron Claw, where the whole movie, you know, was kind of real. Then at the end, they had that weird afterlife, um, yeah, afterlife scene, and I was like, yeah. that came out of nowhere. This whole movie's been real. Now we're just doing that sort of thing. Exactly the same thing with this. It's like Very to me, jolting. Well, at least for me, cons- like it makes yeah, you got to stay consistent, me, yeah. right? You can't break Agreed. the fourth wall during a movie, right? Or or at least sprinkle these yeah. dream like reality breaking things in so you understand that that's the narrative it's like oh okay so it isn't you know these things we can take with a pinch of salt because it's obviously the characters like thoughts and feelings are pervading the part with uh where zach is allowed on with no with his condition and no experience is that part doesn't bother me that much i mean maybe instead of the peanut butter falcon they should have called it mass transit but oh, jesus the, so that part doesn't really bother me but the end it uh, well and obviously the part that bothered me was the mysterious throw you know the whimsical throw reality breaking throw but yeah the just the ending is supposed to be cute like the actual mm-hmm. final ending where they those three are driving off as a family in to, uh, to florida to start their new life together and it's like lovely right mm-hmm. but that's how and then it ends but like you're just sat there thinking, no, because she's <laughs> going to be arrested. He's going to be arrested. And yeah. Zach's going to be in a home now. They're not going to Florida. Like, this is a horrible story. This is depressing. Yeah, it would have made more sense. I don't know how they could have tied it in, but where he ended up doing something with them involving the wrestling, but then also involving where he came from, you know, the original owner of the home that he was in being like, this is great. I've never seen him this way, but like, okay, take him, you know, something like that, obviously a bit better than that, but just the idea that he just kidnapped him and drove to uh, Florida. Uh, yeah. It kind of felt like they, they had this really cool idea for the, you know, the journey and thought we got some really nice scenes we can do. And there can be one scene where they're playing with a bonfire, one scene where they're, they get drunk together and, he can teach him this and all that stuff they fought about hard. And then they were kind of like, Oh, we kind of need like an out to this of this movie, you know, and just couldn't really work it out. I'm just kind of like, Oh, this will do, I guess. Which is funny because like you said, I looked on the national movie database and 
pretty much all the reviews from you know watchers like us is re- are really really strong people really yeah. really loved it yeah maybe we're just too harsh of critics and maybe we just expect more from our movies i mean here's one which i actually think kind of sums it up this person gave it seven out of ten and they said cute film if you don't overthink it and i think that's quite fair unfortunately we yeah. just say we're reviewing it so we are kind of overthinking we it. have to overthink <laughs> it yeah right I think they could have kept the ending that they already had, but made it work better if they already punctuated the movie throughout or sprinkled it with just the knowledge that this is not going to be a happy ending. Like the journey they're having now is, you know, the happiness that they're going to have and you just know it's going to end, but they didn't paint the ending like ambiguously. It was like, no, this is a, this is a happy ending. They're all going off in the sunset Mm. together. I think they could have, even but then you lose the feel good nature of the movie it's just like that would turn that on its head so it's difficult but i think there was a i think there is a way that it could be done i mean i and claude did that pretty well a little bit little bit sickly but pretty well i think i think the peanut butter falcon could have also have done something similar how would you have ended the movie I don't know, but I know what I would do for the Peanut Butter Falcon 2. You know the movie The Raid or Dread, where they're fighting their way out of a, a part like a high-rise skyscraper, <laughs> yeah. where it's he's in this halfway house for the crackheads and has to use what he's learned from oh, the saltwater geez. redneck and from Tyler's life skills to fight his way out of the crack den, where oh, he's God. now... Yep, and yeah, so I basically take the plot of The Raid and have follow Zach wrestling uh, crackheads through a, a massive... Halfway house, yeah, that's what I would do. You know what bothered me, which shouldn't have bothered me? So they're like, okay, Zach, you can wrestle. And then he's in like that barn getting ready. And then he comes out with his peanut butter falcon costume on. Entrance attire, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Well, I think he wears it in the ring, does he not? Or I can't remember. I think he takes it off. But the idea was supposed to be that the outfit was like crap and last minute, right? But it was like, and it was crap, but it was like too good. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, the beak was rounded. It was like cooked. cut nicely yes. and stuck yeah. together. Like, like, I don't think it would take me a while to make something like that. Do you know what I mean? I probably couldn't do it. Do you know what I mean? Like it did, and that for whatever reason bothered me. I think it would have been more fun if like, you know, Tyler took off his t-shirt, ripped the arms off and put it over his face and cut out some eyes for a mask or something like that. But they had this like elaborate cardboard falcon costume made for him right it's kind of like that bothered me for some reason <laughs> i can see why yeah it's like he's like just oh like- let's find some cardboard and then it cuts down it's just like got it's it's got lovely trims it's really well shaped it's like yeah. hang on a minute you're yeah. in a barn first of all right. shouldn't be that much cardboard no. like electrical tape yeah 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 that so i don't know why that just kind of bothered me but um no, I think that's honestly, uh, that is the story of the movie. I think, yeah. um, very good first 80% of the movie kind of let down by the ending and the finish. Um, but again, I've seen it twice now. Didn't regret watching it for the second time. Um, I think I would recommend it. Maybe I would recommend it, but if you're bored well, and you, you know, it's there. Oh, yeah, sorry. would you recommend it to like general if you just want to watch a general movie? Then yeah. I think it would. But if you're recommending it for a wrestling movie, then no, probably not right. Yeah, no. But I think <laughs> um, like I, yeah, I don't know if there's if anyone actually really thinks of this as a wrestling movie. I mean, maybe well, that's there kind might of been- why I wanted to cover it because it's interesting. We've done obviously like the Iron Claw, a legit wrestling biopic, and there's movies like The Wrestler where it's completely central beyond mm. the mat. Uh, documentaries but there's not many movies where it's like wrestling adjacent or where wrestling is like the plot sure. device or just an like object of someone's affection and i found that kind of very interesting and in how like a movie would like that would try and work with that and and now we know it's very interesting i, I, I can't think of any other examples apart from i've said it before blade 2 where they're just mm. wrestling for some reason as the fighting right. style which um but yeah, don't worry. We're not going to review Blade 2 under the auspices that it's a wrestling movie. Unless well, you want us to. I mean, I can imagine if you if you'd heard about this movie coming out and you heard that Jake the Snake was in it and Mick Foley was in it Foley. and you were under the impression it was like a wrestling movie, you'd be obviously very disappointed. 
I think if you're at home and you're bored and you want something to pass the time in the evening or you don't want to think too hard, I think, yeah, give it a watch on Netflix. Why not? And, uh, you know, the characters, are uh, they're very likable. They're so, great, yeah. Yeah, so I think for sure, give it a watch. Um, if I had to give it a rating, that person gave it 7 out of 10. We obviously do a star rating here. Um, I would give it a... I'd give it a 3.5. Yeah, I, I'd love to give it a four, but I just mm. I just can't. But I'm very close to giving it a four. It's really? it mm. makes you feel yeah, I mean, you like you said, you haven't you didn't regret watching it a second time. I mean, obviously yeah. we had to for the podcast, but I would probably watch it again at some point with someone new who hasn't seen it who might be interested. I'd be like, Oh yeah, I'll watch that. And I wouldn't regret watching it. That'd be my fourth time. So mm. obviously, like there is something magnetic about this movie that makes you feel good watching it and that accounts for a lot uh it's just they don't stick the landing you know it kind of poos the bed right at the end and it's like but then so do so many like game of thrones right you know or like so many so games many movies, you know just don't fine. stick the yeah and movies so this is just like another one of those but like those things are also always highly regarded and people just are like yeah the ending sucks but i can overlook that because the rest of it was so good maybe the, maybe i would give this a four like makes you feel oh, good yeah mm. yeah Wow. And like I said, some of the cinematography is really good. The, yeah. the plot is so simple and very charming. And the characters are really likable. Even like Tyler, who's like a bad egg, he's still like very redeemable. And like, you understand him. He's not, he's not 2D. Like there's layers to him and also to Shia LaBeouf's acting. So yeah, I think, oh, and the acting is just on point throughout the whole thing. So that yeah, I, I, would, I think I would give it a four. That I would agree with. Well, if you, uh, if you found this, podcast and this review charming if you've enjoyed <laughs> this then uh give us a five-star review on the old apple podcast that would help us out with the algorithm and if you do we will read out your review on the show and you'll get a shout out for free um of course we're on the uh social medias at the villain pod check us out on youtube tiktok you don't stop and instagram of course uh but no sam i enjoyed it this week and uh yeah i'm gonna throw it over to you all right. Real quick, Google Podcasts is disappearing. So if you listen to Uh-oh. us on Google Podcasts, you're going to have to migrate over to YouTube. All of our podcast episodes are already on YouTube. So it should be nice and easy for you, which is wonderful news. We were way ahead of that, weren't we, Marty? I was kind we of were. impressed with us for that, considering mm-hmm. how technically illiterate we are. We got that done. We got we that done. That was you. So, yeah. yeah, if you use Google Podcasts, yep, just come over to YouTube. All of the episodes are on there, and we'll see you on there. And everybody else, yep, wherever you listen, we greatly appreciate it. And have a good week. Till next week. 